bitches! Welcome back to my channel! My name is Celine if you haven't been here before. And of course, I'm gonna repeat myself as usual. Go ahead and click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of that good good. Yeah, I've never said that in my life. Ew. Today's tutorial is all about how to contour and today I'm gonna be teaching you how to cream contour. I'm talking like setting, bronzing, all of the good stuff that gives you a very full face of makeup. Oh, I am focusing on using a lot of Fenty products today and I know that's a little more expensive so if you would like me to do a tutorial where I use a little bit of cheaper products, let me know because I do have the drugstore products and I can definitely teach you that way as well. All right, let's get in to this uh, tutorial. As you can see, I've already gone ahead and done my eye makeup and my eyebrows because this tutorial is all about how to contour. I'm gonna try and make this as simple as possible because I know that contouring is really overwhelming. I remember the first time doing mine and I looked at my face and was like, <laughs> pretty sure I still went out. There's actually a lot of different ways that you can do your contouring. If you are like a makeup artist, even like one that's learning at home. It's fun to do it in different ways. So I'm kind of thinking this week that I'm gonna show you a few different ways that I like to do it. Then hopefully you can find the one that works for you the best. Let's get into it, shall we? The way I'm gonna show you how I contour is my pretty basic way of doing it and I'm pretty quick at it now, but I will go through it slowly with you. And today I've kind of decided to use Fenty products because why not? Her stuff is pretty freaking wonderful. But we're gonna go in with some foundation. I'm gonna be using the Fenty Beauty Foundation here in the Pro Filter and I'm in the color 360, which is slightly darker for me than I should be using, but there's a pretty good tip I'm gonna throw in there for you when you do use dark makeup like this. It's okay if your foundation is slightly darker because when you go in with concealer, we're gonna lighten it up and you'll see exactly what I mean. My problem is I went on vacation and I got dark as hail and then I came back to good old Canada and my awesome freaking tan faded. I know I'm still tan so I should shut it but all my makeup doesn't match right now. When it comes to the Fenty Beauty foundation, make sure you really shake it up because it is more of a liquid kind of consistency. So you wanna make sure all those ingredients are mixed together. I'm gonna go ahead and use my foundation brush. This is my Urban Studio. I just got this at a Winners, I believe, or a Marshalls, nothing too in particular. Just gonna go ahead and start putting this on my face. I like to dab it in different areas. That way it's not like concentrated with like a big glob and you have to like keep transferring it over. So you can see that this is a bit darker than my skin tone. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was. There has been a bit of sun the past couple days. Who knew, Canada and sun, right? So as you see, I'm just spreading it around, make it nice and even. But don't worry, we're gonna go in with the Beauty Blender to push it into your skin and make it look all flawless and shit. Typically, I like to do my eyebrows last because when you do all your setting powder, I find it gets in your eyebrows, but that's just me. This is a little bothersome to me that my eyebrows are did, <laughs> just for the sake of this video. Make sure that you're getting it into the hairline, not in your hair, the hairline. Because there's nothing worse than like that little tiny gap that you can see there. And everyone's just kind of like, oh my gosh, that ain't her skin. So I just push it in there. See what I mean? It looks a little more natural there than here. And don't be afraid to put some more foundation on your brush if you need it. I like to really push it around first but I think I will need a little bit more. Another thing is guys, because this is darker than my skin, and even if it's not, I tend to blend it into my neck. So like you can see, that's a different color, right? Something I do wanna say about the Fenty foundation is I noticed it kind of dries darker than the color it is, like when you squirt it out of the bottle, which I thought was surprising. Just thought I'd mention that to you guys. So maybe when you go and buy, talk to your Sephora ladies, of course, but maybe just mention to that to them because it's definitely something I've noticed. You know, it's been a hot minute since I've been wearing makeup because I've been tearing it up. <laughs> not tearing it up, tearing it up. It's not as badass, is it? But that's okay. Sometimes you just, you need those weeks without makeup and that's fine. Go ahead and take your beauty blender and if you have the non-original kind at home, don't worry. Personally, I love the original. Just make sure it's damp and it gets a lot bigger once you put the water in that bad boy. And we're just gonna push in all that foundation that we just did. I've gotten a lot faster using the beauty blender. I remember when I first got it, I was like, Duh, and it's, <laughs> you'll find your technique that works for you. 
I love this freaking eyeshadow. It's from the Flamingo Eyeshadow Palette by Violet Voss. It's so colorful. Oh yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and highlight parts of our face. When you're highlighting certain areas of your face, remember that those are the parts that you wanna be bringing forward. When you're contouring, these are your darker colors, and these are to create more of shadows, so kind of an illusion, actually. Sorry, boys, we have our tricks, I know. But I'll show you all of that in just a moment. Because I decided to start with my Fenty foundation, I thought, let's keep it all Fenty as much as I can all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and use the Fenty Beauty Concealer here. This is the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer, and this is in the color 330. One thing that's really awesome about the foundation and concealers with Fenty is that they kind of color-coded it for you. So like once you find the foundation that matches your skin, they actually have it set up so you can find the concealer that goes with that foundation. Gonna go ahead and use that Fenty concealer I just showed you. And I'm gonna make triangles under the eyes, okay? Now, I didn't connect my whole triangle because I find that once I use the Beauty Blender to blend it out. So that's how I like to do my first one. So start from the inner corner of your eye. Not quite all the way in there because that'll just hurt. Below the inner corner of your eye, sorry. Start there and we're gonna do a line downward towards your nostril. Underneath the inner corner eye and we're gonna swipe it across. See where my makeup ends there? We're gonna go beyond the outer corner of your eye like so. And then I like to just make some lines here rather than like actually coloring in an entire triangle. I'm also going to highlight my nose right here. So we're just gonna make a a very simple line. Yeah. And then typically I like to do three lines going up. Again, it's basically a triangle. I just don't color in the whole thing because the product will spread once I use the beauty blender. So you basically just do one line there in the middle and outward. So basically above your eyebrows. Don't go too crazy far with it now. And then just a bit on my chin. Now guys, something I do wanna to mention to you while I'm doing this is that everyone's face shape is different. My contour, exactly what I'm showing you, isn't gonna be, it might not be perfect for your face. I'm just showing you that what I do at home myself. I like to start under the eyes first and I just like to dab and push in and I just bring it out. So you see how all those lines, they're starting to like mesh together that's why I don't really find like I have to draw the whole triangle and waste all that product. You're gonna push it right under there, under your waterline. And don't worry about it not looking super perfect at first because it's a process, you know? It does cover my bags pretty good and you can already see it's like lightening that part of my face, which is really nice. I know I always say I'm crying all the time. Crying creates some heavy bags under your eyes. Who knew? And puffy eyes. Oh. It's a beautiful time, by the way. Squeeze it like this so that it becomes more narrow. And you're gonna push on your nose and push it in. All right, now let's get into contouring. Again, I said I'm using a bunch of Fenty products today, so I'm gonna be using the matchstick in the color Mocha, and I like to use this for contouring, of course. Now, the reason I like to use this for contouring is because it has more of a gray tone to it, which I like more than browns. I do use browns to contour as well, but grays are nice because it gives the illusion of a shadow, the illusion that there is an indentation slightly. I usually like to start at the top of my head when I'm contouring, actually, and play with my, my new hair. I love it. So I'm just gonna do a little line right there. Then I like to go almost like a big three on my face. So I'm gonna go like this in a three. So you start at the top of the head, right? And you make your three, you go down. And you're gonna go into the hollow part underneath your cheek. So if you make the fish face, you'll find it easily. You go. can't talk and do fish face. I could try. Okay, let's try. Well, nope. <laughs> so 
So as you're making your three, you go. See where I put that mark? It is the hollow of my cheek. I hope this face is helping you. So start from the top, you go here, you go back out, like a three with like a big top. <laughs> now I don't like to go super duper far when I go in to the hollow of my cheekbone. I don't want it touching my mouth, no. It's basically almost, almost the middle of your eye, maybe a third of the way. In, and then you go back out, go down the hairline here, and then you're gonna line that jawline there, like so. I'm gonna show it to you again on the other side, just so that you get the idea. I'm also gonna do a little bit of nose contouring. So what I like to do is kind of start from this part of my eyebrow, the part that goes here, from this part of my eyebrow, and I go in a straight line down. Make sure it's not all wiggle woggly. You don't want that, okay? And again, depending on how wide your nose is, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with your nose. Honestly, I'm fine with my nose. It's not like it bugs me. Although I have gotten a little bit addicted to contouring my nose when I do my makeup. It just looks so perfect. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but especially in pictures, it looks snatch, which I never say and felt very uncomfortable and please don't judge me, but that's the word I'm using to describe this. If you feel like this is too big, by the way, to contour on your nose, feel free to like just use a brush if you feel like that gives you more control. When it comes to blending out contour, I like to use one of my brushes first. And it really depends on which product I use to contour because some of them aren't as creamy. The less creamy it is, the harder it is to blend in. Some of them dry out faster than others. This stuff is pretty creamy. It's pretty good, I won't lie. I'm just gonna be using my Urban Studio Pro Contour brush here, which I also got at Marshalls. It was like, nine bucks maybe. When it comes to blending out your contour, I like to start at the top of my head. That's just me. I don't think it really freaking matters what you do. I'm gonna go where I started the contour at my forehead here, and I'm gonna start blending it, and I'm gonna pull it into my hairline, like so. And don't worry, like you see here how it looks very straight edge, and you're like, oh my God, Aren't you gonna blend that? We're gonna go in at the Beauty Blender after we use this brush, just so it all looks very, very flawless. Blend it in to your hairline so that it looks more natural, even though they all know we're wearing makeup. So you see the top? Yes, it's not perfect. There's some little lines that just look kind of messy, but don't worry about that. We're gonna fix it. Also, by the way, the technique with this brush, when you're blending it all out, tapping it in, and then doing little tiny swirls of where I wanna place it because you don't want it to go all over the place, right? You're trying to make the face basically look thinner than what it really is. I love makeup. Now we're gonna do the fun part, the part that goes into the hollow. Now this, don't put it everywhere. The point of this line here is to create that shadow that your cheekbone really sticks out. When you're doing it, make sure you try to keep it in the same area. If you make a mistake, I'm gonna show you what I do if I do accidentally do that. All right, keep it in there, right in that hollow. See, nothing crazy, it didn't go below. Tell you what, I'm gonna make a mess of this one just so I can show you what it is I do when I make that mistake because especially as a beginner, no, it's not gonna be perfect. So I show you my cheat codes. Now we wanna make sure we blend out the rest, especially the jawline, because I have done this before where I've gone out or I'm like rushing it and I forget to like blend out my jawline and I just have this straight up line. Not cute, not cute, no. Doing this will give you a very chiseled look. Again, blend it into your hairline. I'm gonna make a mess of this one to make a point, okay? Yes, you should keep it in the hollows of your cheeks but as a beginner, sometimes you lose control. 
you just, you get it all over the place. You know, blending and blending and I'm not paying attention. I start bringing it down. See, I'm bringing it down, that's a big no-no. Don't bring it down. I'm just showing you what to do in case it happens. See how it's kind of all of a mess now? Like it's, I don't know if you can see it even. It's kind of messy, there's some here, some here, which I do not like. Before I clean up the mess, I'm gonna go ahead and use that damp beauty blender and I'm gonna push in all that contour just so it looks more natural. Damn it, the beauty blender kind of cleaned it up. <laughs> Cause I wanted to show you what you do when you make like a big mistake, but I'm still gonna show it to you. Say your contour is really messy. It's just like all over. It just doesn't look good. What I usually do is I go back in with the concealer I had already used to highlight my face. And I just simply do this. You find that line from the ear into your hollow, right? I'm gonna go slightly below it. And I'm just gonna make a little line like this. Just like that. Just slightly below where your contour went on the cheek because this is gonna clean it up. It's gonna give it more of a straight line where it makes it look very chiseled, your look, but I'll show you what I mean. I'll even do it on this side. The bottom part of this ear on an angle. If it helps you, shoop, just a little bit, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my concealing brush here. I'll show you up close. It's just a brush I got from Amazon. Nothing super duper special about it. I'm gonna take my concealing brush Oh, this is actually a Morphe brush, I'm sorry. This brush is the Morphe R42. Now where I made that line, here, I'll bring you in so you guys can see it. I've made this line here. I'm going to sweep it in a little and bring it down. Just bring it downward like this. And then you're gonna take your damp beauty blender. So be careful because you have gotten with the contouring and depending what product you use, that color might be on your beauty blender. So either clean it off or just make sure you use a spot that does not have the brown on it. But you can see it's kind of messy. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna push it in. You don't have to do this step, but like if you make a mess, this does help clean it up. See what I mean? It just kind of gives it that more clean. We'll do the same thing on this side again. Use that concealing brush. You're just gonna drag it down. Now, don't feel like you have to bring it in too far. It's basically the same spot that you brought in that contouring line. It's about a third wave in your eye, if it helps. Take that damp beauty blender and blend it together. Because I'm doing a tutorial, I am taking my sweet ass time, so it doesn't usually take me this long to get to certain parts of the steps. My concealing, I haven't set it yet. So I'm gonna just gonna go ahead in with the beauty blender and push in anywhere I see a bit of creasing. And we're gonna go ahead and set that stuff because I've been taking too long explaining the contouring part. <laughs> When it comes to using your setting powder, one technique I like to use is use your beauty blender and it's okay if it's damp. You're gonna have your setting powder all ready to go. I like to use this end here where it's more pointy. You're just gonna literally put it in there flat. Okay, nothing crazy. You can even tap it off a little bit if you want. The reason I like to use this corner here is because you're gonna be going under the eye. So this little point will give you a little more control of putting it under the eye. Under the eye is to set the concealer, which stops it from creasing. And this also will give you a more highlighted area. So we're gonna go ahead and set. Just dab a dab. And I like to bring it all the way out. And then you can just kind of push it down a little bit more. That's typically what I do. And yes, the Fenty setting powder looks super duper thick when you put it on, which I think looks really, really cool. I have had some problems with dusting it off after, but we'll see how that goes today before I start saying things. Dip that beauty blender in to your setting powder. Now, I also like to put some on my chin and a bit on my forehead. Again, the places we highlighted, but don't feel the need to put it on your nose because that'll just make a mess. 
what I do like to do when it comes to my nose is because I did contour, which I feel like um, <laughs> the recording stopped when I was doing the blending there. So my bad if you didn't see me do it. Contouring on the nose is gonna be dark basically here, the top of the nose, right? So you can go ahead and take that setting powder and you're basically gonna find that line and you're just gonna place setting powder right beside it. And what this does is it's gonna give it more of a contrast look, which gives a better illusion that there is a shadow on your nose, giving again this tricky idea that your nose is thinner. So again, where that line was, I'm basically just pushing it against where that wall was, but not on top of it, just right beside it. I don't always do it, but I'll do it for the sake of this. So you take that outer corner part here, again, you're just gonna follow from the top of your ear in a diagonal, and you're gonna stream it down like this. Do the same thing on the other side. Go from the top of your ear on an angle downward. Now you don't have to bring it all the way down, like all the way, I'll show you. So like right here. Start there, and use that tip there as your guide, and you go downward on an angle. Perfect. Typically, I like to let my setting setting powder sit for about five minutes. Depends. All right, it's been about five minutes or so. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this giant fluffy powder brush. It's like my favorite. I just got it at Marshalls, which I never shop in there, and I might have to take a peek more often because they have some pretty cool makeup stuff in there. And I'm gonna start dusting away. But as I'm dusting it away, I'm gonna try and bring it on to the parts that have no setting powder on it because you need the whole face to be set. The point in the places I put the setting powder is to create an even more highlighted look. It looks brighter. You sweep it away, but you can bring it downward onto the cheek. And you can just do little circles. My one problem with the Fenty setting powder is I do find it sticks pretty freaking good. I'm not saying it's a horrible thing. I think it just takes more work to dust off than some of my other setting powders that I have. But you can really see it. Like it kind of almost looks too dry, if you know what I mean. And I don't think of myself with skin that's too, too dry. You can see it's like kind of sticking and it's kind of hard to get off, which I've noticed before, which does kind of bug me, but it does definitely highlight the area. Whatever setting powder is left on your face, try to move it around on the rest of your face. And this will help you not have such a muddy look later. And I'll explain that in a moment. Dust, but you can bring it down a little bit. I even like to bring this one up and just kind of Nice circles, just get it on the whole face. Go over the nose, because you want to set all of the makeup, the foundation, everything. But the point of the setting powder of where I placed it is to create more highlighted areas and to stop creasing from happening. Yes, I used all the powder left on my face. As a newbie, I have made this mistake. I did not spread the setting powder enough around my face. For example, all these places that I put it, it's definitely gonna be set, it's not gonna smudge around, but say I miss a little spot here, or here, whatever. I miss a spot, I didn't get to set it. When I go in and I do my blush and my bronzing, if I hit a spot that isn't set, it will look muddy. And I don't know if you guys know what it means when I say muddy, but it looks patchy, it looks not good. If you're new to the cream contouring game, a little tip I'll give you guys is, if you're worried you didn't have enough setting powder to hit all the spots on your face, just use your giant fluffy powder brush there again. Dip in to a little bit of setting powder. You can even tap it off, you don't need a crazy amount. You can go over the spots that weren't meant to be super highlighted just if you wanna feel safe that it is really set. So for example, you can just, I'd like to tap on the spots that were not highlighted with the setting powder and just do circles. That way you can ensure that the setting powder is setting every spot. Even over the nose, okay? It's important. Again, guys, just practice, practice, and you'll, you'll see what feels right for you. You'll get to know what you're doing. It's like anything, practice makes perfect. I even like to set my neck that way. It just doesn't move around, you know? Just set it, let it sit there. 
So our face has been set. That's what you want before we move on to our blush, bronzing, and highlighting, of course. Okay, let's get to the fun part. Since we're doing so much Fenty stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Fenty bronzing, and this is what it looks like here. This is in the color Bahan Gyal. All right, bronzing is basically to warm up the face. Yes, this is basically contouring, again. You know, today's contouring is pretty hardcore. I'm, I went in with the cream contour and the powder contour I'm gonna show you right now. Throughout the week, I'm gonna show you different ways of contouring and even simple ways to contour, like just powder, because this might be a super intimidating video for those that are new here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my bronze slash glow brush I got here, also from Winners. Uh, the reason I like this is because unlike my other bronzing brushes, this one is tapered off a little more at the end, which is awesome because you have more control. So we're gonna go ahead and dip on in there. You can tap it off if you like. So I'm gonna start at the top of my forehead just to warm it up. Again, you can push it into your hairline you're basically following the same contour that we did with that three shape, but you're just gonna do little circles, just do a little bit at a time because you don't wanna go in too harshly with it. And because again, that tapered end, I have more control of where I'm placing it on my face. So as you can see, I'm going into the hollow on my cheek a little bit here. You can even do the jawline a bit if you like. For blush, I'm gonna go into my NARS blush palette here, which I freaking love. The reason I love this palette so much is that, no, it's not super pigmented, but you can build up the color, and I find that it's just so, so blendable, this blush, which some blushes, they can be great color or whatever, but they just don't blend as easily. The brush I'm gonna be using for my blush is actually a powder brush. Now, the reason I like to use this is because of the shape of it. It's not totally round. It's kind of more of an oval. It's very, very fluffy. That way, it, when you put it on your face, it won't be so like, it won't be such a concentrated color in one spot. It'll disperse very nicely with this one. I'm gonna head right into this color here, this pink here. I really like that. So I'm just gonna dab it in there. What I like to do is go on the apples of my cheeks. So these are the apples of your cheeks. When you smile, You've got little kind of like chubby parts right there. That's the apple of your cheek. Gonna dab on very lightly. See the color, it takes a while to show. The first time I used it, I was a little bit upset because I'm like, this palette is freaking like 70 something dollars. But then once I kept adding up the color, it looks so, so beautiful. So be patient with it if this is what you're using. You can slightly see color showing up and I like to just bring it up ever so slightly. And you see like a slight color showing up. It's not a lot, which is okay, because sometimes you want a more natural look, right? On the apple of your cheek, you can just bring it up slightly. So you can see the motion that I'm using is, I'm just dabbing it like, like this, it's very softly. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing circles, just soft dabs, and you can bring it up slightly on the cheek. All right, let's do the highlighting, the fun part. Well, since I did bring out my NARS blush palette here, I think I'll just use the highlighter that it comes with, which is very beautiful. It's right here. I really like that one. The brush I'll be using for my highlighter today is a Sephora brush. It's literally a highlighting brush. Again, it's kind of like the bronzing brush that I used. It has like a tapered end to it. It's not as fluffy or as big, of course. This is one of my favorite brushes uh, I like to use when it comes to highlighting my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that brush and head into the highlighter in my NARS palette here. The first place I like to highlight on my face is the cheekbone. You can literally feel it. It's hard. It goes from here and up. You're just gonna go ahead and sweep that highlighter like so. You're gonna sweep it. You're not doing circles or anything. You're not patting it down, you're sweeping it. You go a little bit above where your the apple is of your cheeks, right here, and you sweep up. I like to sweep it up to the temple here, and you load on as much as you like. We'll do the same thing to the other cheek, right on the cheekbone. And then I like to highlight the bridge of my nose and the very tip. You can either do this with your finger or your brush, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm used to doing both, but I have the brush, so. Just on the bridge of it. So right in the middle, okay? I just like to rub a little bit on the tip of my nose. And use my Huda Liquid Matte Lipstick, which is probably my most favorite lipstick to use in the world, by the way.
The last step, by the way, guys, is setting spray. Not only does this help your makeup stay all day, it feels super duper fresh because I know there is a lot of layers of makeup on right now. So this stuff feels really good. I like to use the Morphe setting spray. Not only is it really cheap, it was 20 bucks, which I know isn't cheap to everyone, but in the makeup world, it's pretty good. And it just feels so refreshing. So here we go. Ooh, nice and fresh. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. Remember to hit that subscribe button, leave comments down below, and I will see you all soon. Bye.